Welcome, citizens, to another StarCraft Nation broadcast. I am your host, Venerati, and we're going to see the second matchup in between Sake and Jinro coming from the MLG Dallas 2010 Series Championships. Now, this, uh, if you didn't join us for the last one, the first matchup in between these two was on Metalopolis, and oh, that was a beautiful, beautiful sight, as Jinro ended up taking Sake with uh, constant drops in the corner in those gas vents and just really uh, building a marauder-heavy army and getting Vikings as well, taking out those Colossi and just wrapping up Sake. Sake, meanwhile, is, we saw a pretty big macro game as it did go about 20 minutes uh, game time. And Sake and then his trading bases back and forth, contesting the high-yield minerals. As we saw uh, early on, Sake was pushing Jinro around, but Jinro adapted and was able to defeat the, the uh, basically the Colossus build, as we saw a lot of Colossus on the field for Sake, but never really able to reach that critical mass. I think we saw five at one point, but Jinro doing a good job of leaning on his planetary fortress and uh, repairing it with the SCVs. That was really clutch right there. And then, of course, Ghost in the mix, throwing down those EMP blasts and basically stripping all the shields from Sake's units. But now, to the now, on this map, we are on Desert Oasis, and this map is super, super awesome. I love this match, or map, and I do love this match. Uh, this is m my nomination for one of the most epic maps, matchups for the MLG 2 2010, is this is a very long game. Kind of a spoiler there, but I'm just going to let you know, this is a long game, and I might be hoarse after casting this, but it is so good. Mmm, yummy. So... Right now, Sake is uh, going bringing up the uh, bringing up the similar. We're seeing very very standard openers from both of our players here, and the spawning. Of course, there's only two places to spawn on this map, so you're either going to get one or the other, and they're relatively close for air rushing. Use the air distance is very close, but so long it takes so long to move all this way around and around and around, and then you finally get there. Even with Zerglings with uh, metabolic boost, it takes a good t good amount of time, but uh, so you really see this kind of map force players, not force, but kind of slowly suggest and whisper in their ears, hey, get air, get air. And yes, in fact, you do see a lot of players get a lot of air units on this map, kind of like Scrap Station. Uh, this is Scrap Station just in a different form and in the desert, not in space. So right now, we do see the uh, Cybernetics Core finishing up for Sake. So Sake sticking to his guns, not choosing to get the Zealot out first, but he's going to be getting the uh, going to be getting the stalker, going to be Corona boosting it out there, and actually getting two assimilators. So he is really going to be going for heavy, heavy gas. So I'm going to be looking for tech, and Jinro is going to be looking for it too because he scouted that out with this SEV. Meanwhile, Jinro hasn't gotten any gas so far. We see three racks coming down for him. We see uh, another early, early expansion as Jinro really feeling comfortable with himself and his ability to defend it as we have four marines on the field for him right now we have these two more racks will be finishing up momentarily and this uh barracks is done of course we don't see any reactor or tech facility on it but either way he's going to be able to apply really early pressure to sake and then we see a fourth barracks going down so jinro is going to be going heavy 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 rack units but Wait, what is that? What do we see in the production tab? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is a Stargate. This is the reason why these assimilators were there, and he is going to be getting early, early air. Now, is it going to be Phoenix? Is it going to be Void Ray? I'd like to see Void Ray, uh, but that's just me. And in fact, it's going to be Phoenix. So we're going to be seeing Phoenixes coming from Sake. Sake is going to be able to run rapid around this, uh, around this map with his area units and able to lift, uh, lift these SCVs out into the air, allowing their brethren to, sh the brethren phoenix to shoot, and, uh, I know I never really took, uh, too much notice of these guys, but these are definitely pretty vicious little raptor birds right there, Urubu, or what, I'm not even gonna go into that pronunciation, but this command center will be turning into an orbital command, we do see general fortifying his position, nice utilization of the choke point, generally you would see people put the bunkers here, but no, Jinro wanting to engage his, uh, foe right here in that choke point, so this bunker will be solidifying his position once again. And let's go take a look at the units tab. He has a lot of air, or he has a lot of Marines. Yes, we have 12 Marines on the field right now. Of course, we do have this Phoenix coming around. By itself, this Phoenix won't be any threat to the uh, mineral line, but we do actually see the Marines coming in and not liking this Phoenix. We'll be taking it down to a 
quarter of health there. That is a... Uh, or I'm sorry, not a quarter. I cannot do math today. A uh, third health right there. So now that there are two, you will be able to see them able to lift units up in the air, and the other one will be able to kill it, but it won't be infected until you see about three, four, maybe even five units. But we are seeing turrets going down for Jinro, so Jinro is going to be able to defend against this relatively easily as these turrets will just rape those phoenixes all day long. We actually do see things coming in here trying to lift, trying to do something, but he drops the uh, SCV before... He actually sustains too much damage, so I really feel that uh, Sake kind of made the wrong decision here, as these phoenixes are not going to be not going to be effective. But he runs them right over that turret, and we just saw that one uh, phoenix going down, and this other phoenix nearly dead as it pauses and thanks its uh, <laughs> thanks its deities that it's alive, and kind of uh, did it over that scantipede. Scantipedes are pretty brutal looking. And uh, that phoenix, wow, counting his blessings, is Sake, of course, stopping the building, stopping the production of those phoenixes will be grabbing zealot legs and looks to me like he might be going heavy zealot as the zealots of course will be oh so oh so apt at killing these marines as the marines just uh, melt before the zealot menace of course Jinro feeling confident that his mineral lines will be saved go, goes ahead and pulls his marines off there going and grabbing this high yield and looks like he's going to be applying pressure here as this uh, stalker trying to run away but running himself into a uh, <laughs> And no outlet corner as if a uh, general so chooses, these five marines will be more than happy to dispatch this stalker as the stalker trying to run back up the ramp. Will it be able to get away from it in time? No, I do not believe so as we do see the marines stimming right there. And we have a lot of marines right now. So Sake could be seeing some really, really brutal pressure, but we do actually have uh, several zealots and several sentries here. So Sake warping in some units, trying to solidify his position, and we do see the fourth, fifth, actually, gateway coming in there for him, and legs are almost, almost done. So Sake in a weird position because the original tech that he ran to didn't really pay off, and that's going to kind of set him back behind macro-wise because not only does Jinro already have this uh, high-yield minerals just about finished up, but... I'm pretty sure he's behind mineral count. Oh, actually, not too bad. He is only two harvesters behind Sosaki, making sure they doesn't fall behind in the harvester count. And Jinro, not to, uh, God, not to let himself down, going to be throwing down two more racks. So we're going to see massive, massive, massive amounts of rack units. And we're going to see a lot of them very quickly. So once you, uh, if you feel comfortable and you're able to get these production facilities out, you're really allowing yourself to reinforce for later battles, later engagements. If you have three and four expansions here, you're going to have a lot of money to spend. And if you don't have enough production facilities, you're not going to be able to expend it. And that's just really frustrating. When you have 6K in the bank, you've got your enemy knocking on the door, and you've got two barracks. It's a little too late at that point. And we do actually see the forces of General Stimming trying to run up here, trying to make something happen. We do see a couple of force fields coming down, trapping this one rod. Of course, <laughs> Those cells will be more than happy to split it in half right there at the waist and just completely have it bleed all over the place. So one of those zealots definitely has a grin on his face as it was able to dispatch that. And we do see a couple bunkers coming down for Jinro. So, of course, Jinro just pushing out farther and farther, just really trying to dig in. Those bunkers are going to allow him to defend with minimal units and give him that much more time to react. But, oh, wait, what is this, folks? We do have Psionic Storm coming on for Sake, so Sake is going to be using his High Templar. So uh, this is a pretty powerful build where you go Heavy Heavy Zealot High Templar. is very good against most units. Um, not so good against Heavy Mech or Heavy Air as the uh, the Psionic Storm really doesn't do so much against the Heavy 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 Mech. The Zealots are really good against getting up in there and getting those uh, getting in the tank's face, getting into those Thor's face. Uh, not necessarily... I, I feel that a Hellion... A heavy Hellion build would be very difficult to handle with this because you wouldn't be able to actually grab hold of them, and you'd see a lot of hit and run tactics, and you would probably see your uh, bases getting your <laughs> mineral lines getting pillaged. But either way, we see the uh, we see the planetary fortress down here for Liquid Jinro, and what do we see coming out of this Ghost Academy? But they don't see much of anything. Not right now, because Jinro doing a good job of constantly, constantly producing here, just really utilizing all of his production facilities to the max. We see this scouting factory uh, looking here, over here and seeing this uh, force of zealots. Now, I don't believe that this would really be enough to take this ball. Although it is very marine heavy. If you put his marauders up front, allowing the marines to stem and do that DPS, the uh, zealots would fall pretty heavily. But... The High Templar are here, and it's going to be quite a different story with that, as these psionic storms will do so much to these Marines. These Marines are so weak against that stuff, but we actually do have a ghost. 
the ghost with this EMP blast will be able to uh, strip all of the energy away from these high Templars. We do see that uh, bunker go down. Woo, excuse me. And we actually see uh, the Mobius reactor coming online for the ghost. So the ghost will have that much more energy. We don't actually see Cloak, so kind of disappointed that we don't have Cloak there. His Cloak does make me quite happy. We actually have the uh, high Templar poking around over here. And we, I, I do believe that we actually saw a storm there. Not so sure as we do have all of these units being healed up by the medevacs. Now these medevacs have to be careful about getting high amounts of mana as we will see actually, yes, we will see feedback on that and we saw the feedback of that ghost. Great, great micro there as he was able, Sake was able to pick that out and kill that ghost and throw down a Sonic Storm just for shits and giggles as we do see a lot of these units are actually not feeling so great. And we do have another ghost coming up here. So... Uh, really, uh, Jinro is going to have to do a good job of protecting his ghost because actually we do see another Sonic Storm going down all these Marines and they just took a bath in there as most of these guys, yes, are on life support, 15 health and below.